I have in my possession two modern choose your own adventure books. These are the first books in their respective series. Uh, the War Torn Kingdom, uh, first book in the Fabled Lands, and uh, The Legion of Shadow, first book in the Destiny Quest series. I started both of them, but neither kept my attention. Um, and I'm a completionist to a fault, so <laughs> I will probably try them again someday. In the meantime, I've been doing better with the Desktop Calendar uh, by Sundial Games. If you've been following that series, I would put that in the same category, but it's much more linear than typical choose your own adventures. Um, so, meanwhile, I've been enjoying videos by a YouTuber called Wizard Dead Loss. He's been playing through some Dungeons and Dragons content from the olden days. He has some, frankly, brilliant moments of um, role-playing and storytelling. So, as I do with um, every YouTuber that I like, I went to his videos and uh, sorted by oldest first. <laughs> and I found something interesting. He wrote a choose-your-own-adventure called Far and Beyond. So... Hello, I'm Liam, and we are playing Far and Beyond. I've gone ahead and selected some characters and kitted them out, so to speak. Uh, the rules walk you through this. Let's see, we've got a fighter. Um, and she has... Here, we'll lay her down. There we go. She's got, uh, I gave her plate mail, a shield, a helmet, a one-handed sword, a short bow, and some arrows. Um, we've got a cleric. She has, uh, she's specialized in the spirit felt, uh, faith realm. And so we've got some spells, deafness, bolstering bolt, minor healing, divine bolt, holy light. Um, I gave her chain mail, a shield, a war hammer. Uh, she has no ranged uh, weapons, so her only ranged attacks will be spells. That's a side effect or a consequence of specializing in the spirit faith realm. Um, it's okay if none of this <laughs> means anything right now. It'll, it'll matter later. Uh, we have a mage. Here's our mage. These pieces all came, by the way, um, in the PDF that Wizard Dead Loss sells. Um, so we've got a mage elemental school. I specialized in earth. You don't have to specialize, but that's what I did. And he's got a few spells. Uh, candle, drizzle, makes it rain, water of life. Uh, instant door is <laughs> really interesting to me and potentially um, very useless. So... I had to pick it. Um, and a golet, which I believe is a golem. Um, just a small golem. Here's one. They look like this. So he can summon golems or golets. Uh, that's our mage. And a thief. Let's see. Here she is. And uh, let's see. I gave her leather armor, which has an interesting mechanic, um, which we'll get into, I'm sure, at some point. And a one-handed sword, a short bow, and some arrows. So that those are our characters. Um, let's see. I consider I considered skipping the very first of the um, story entries. Uh, it's quite a bit of reading, um, especially for a YouTube video. Uh, but the writing sets the tone uh, so well, and there are some characters and events, I think, that are introduced here at the beginning. Um, so I don't want to skip it. I think they're important. So I hope you don't mind, but we're going to begin at the beginning. Let's see what we've got here. The Adventure of the One-Legged Man. We do actually have a miniature of this guy, I believe. 
the one-legged man so um just a little tip he if you're you know i'm not the kind of person uh who wakes up thinking boy what i'd like to do is cut some paper <laughs> but um and there's a lot of um uh optional assembly i'm not going to say assembly required because i think you could play this whole game without any of this stuff that i cut out and prepared but it's there and uh you know um if you put a task in front of me especially an optional one by golly i'm going to complete it so there's our one-legged man the instructions advise uh, gluing this together, but I find that staples work just as well. If you have a small enough stapler, I've got a mini stapler, um, you can staple these things together. It's a lot faster, less messy, and it gives a little bit of weight. So uh, they uh, work a little more conveniently that way. So there's our one-legged man. Okay, here we go. The adventure of the one-legged man. So this is how it begins. It's as fine a spring morning as you could wish for. The sun is rising just over the eastern lands. The sky is a pale blue and there is still a chill left over from a cold, starry night. You walk along a lane that winds its way through farmer's fields. The land westward rises to bald, stony hills and then to high mountains beyond glowing pink in the early light. Your destination is the village of Hampton. It's nowhere special, but it has a good inn, and it's on the edge of civilized land. Beyond it lies wilderness, lands with strange caves and creatures, and the ruins of long-lost peoples and kingdoms. Adventure awaits. How your small band of odd fellows came together is a story for you to tell. Some of you have waved goodbye to friends and family, some of you may have escaped from capture. Some of you may even have stowed away on a ship. But each of you have decided not to play the cards that life has dealt you. You have left behind work, studies, apprenticeships, taskmasters, and duties. You are challenging fate to a game of adventure and glory. Tales of vast treasure hordes and wealth immeasurable fill your dreams. You are, however, new to this life. Your skills are mostly untested. Are you excited or are you apprehensive about the life you have chosen? I want to pause there for a moment. I think we're meant to think about these questions and make some choices about who we are now, and that's fine, but I think it's okay too to not know. Um, we don't know much about this world or the story we're entering, and I I like to know more about these things before I make choices about how we fit in. Um, Geek Gamers, another YouTuber, a very popular one in this space, and for good reason. She advises uh, solo RPGers to understand or choose the setting before making characters, which isn't exactly in line with the usual advice you get about writing and storytelling. The characters, they say, make people care about the plot, and that's true. But I think here in this medium, uh, knowing more about the world and the story helps make more interesting characters. So let's see how our characters respond to things, and we'll learn about who they are as we go. Okay, back to the story. Um, you arrive at Hampton, and everything is as expected. The village square is centered around a well. The Shaggy Dog Inn is the largest building. It groans and sags under a heavy thatched roof. There is a blacksmith outside his workshop hammering at the forge. A small tumble-down store has a hanging sign that says Polly's Potions. The tallest building is a modest temple with a garden out front and a statue to a goddess you don't recognize. At the edge of the village uh, is a peddler selling papers from a small open chest. He has hammered a sign into the earth beside him. It declares Sam's Scrolls. Some of the locals are going about their business. A voice is calling out, treasure map, I've got a treasure map to sell you. The seller is a young lad, scrawny and in rags. He's holding up something in his hand. You can't believe your luck, a treasure map already. 
A woman passing by stops and says, What's it today, Skinny Jim? Treasure maps? Hold it up and let's have a look. She snorts as the boy unfurls a square of dirty linen. Ha! It's just rag with stains on it. If you want to earn some bread, go do something useful. Until then, run off and stop being a pest. You realize that it's just some urchin trying to make a coin. Oh well, no treasure. Disappointed, you go to the inn. You want to rent a room, eat, and then, well, what exactly? The bar inside the shaggy dog has a low ceiling. It's rather gloomy, lit by sunbeams coming through the small windows. The innkeeper is talking to the only other customer. You catch a few words, and it seems, from all the gesturing, that he's giving the fellow directions to somewhere. The fellow thanks him and turns to leave. He's an old, craggy man, slightly stooped, wearing a long, dirty coat. He walks with a crutch, and you see as he passes that one leg ends in a stump of wood. Yet he's more agile than you would think. He nods at you as he hastens on his way to the door. You rent a room. It costs one gold piece each. The innkeeper shows you upstairs. There's a midday meal included in the price. We do a good feed, he says with some pride. But that's not for a while yet. He hands you a heavy iron key and leaves you to it. Your room has four beds with straw mattresses and little else. Some of you test the beds, not bad. Some of you look out the little window to view the hills and mountains. This is it, you think, though what it is, you have little idea. It's obvious you don't have much equipment. Together you have 250 gold coins. You all decide it would be best to buy things in Hampton before setting off into the wild beyond. You make your way outside. All is as before, though you notice the one-legged fellow is talking to Skinny Jim. He's showing an interest in the so-called treasure map. He seems to be humoring the young lad. Why, this is the finest treasure map I've ever seen. You shouldn't be selling this for one gold piece. I'd give you five. Though, alas, I don't have that much money on me. I know where I can get the cash if you don't mind coming with me. Uh, there's a page for shopping in Hampton. That's, I've uh, got that in the back here. You decide either to go to the blacksmith or to Polly's Potions or check out the Peddler Sam's Scrolls. And it tells you which paragraph to turn to. I've already done all that. I've spent all of our 250 gold coins on the equipment that I showed you before. At the very end, let's see. If I go to paragraph 14, it's one of the options. Um, after we, we get to meet these characters, which is fun, I'm skipping that, I'm skipping forward a little bit just to get us into the action. Where's 14? Uh, if you feel you've bought all you need, turn to page, uh, paragraph 38, which is, um, where we're at. Page, let's see, 32, 38. Here we go. What an ordeal. You have bought all that you need, and it took a lot longer than you thought. It did, actually. <laughs> um, there was quite a bit of decision-making involved. Uh, most of the morning has gone. You're ready for the offer of a good meal at the Shaggy Dog, but as you step out onto the village square, there is commotion and a scream. Two of the villagers are holding up Skinny Jim. His legs are sagging, but more shocking is his shirt soaked in blood you hasten forward to the crowd do you think bah urchins let the locals handle it and return to the inn two if you have a healer in your party offer to use a healing spell uh, three if you have a healing potion offer it and four if you have ten gold offer to carry the boy to the temple for healing uh, we do not have ten gold we do not have a healing potion so our choices are to either ignore it or um, offer to heal. Our cleric does have a healing spell. But um, I think we'll stop there for now. And uh, when we visit again, we'll decide what to do here. Until then, friends, may there be a grand adventure on your horizon. Thanks for watching.